What is going on, you guys? AK40 Kevin here in the Gamer Heaven. Today, I want to talk about how to protect your NiceHash and Coinbase accounts. There are a lot of CD schemey hackers and viruses out there that want to take your coin. You put a lot of time, energy, and money putting together your mining rig, or maybe you have multiple rigs and you have a farm. Don't let some Trojan horse gallop into your system or some backdoor entry point to get access to your system. So without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and lock down our Coinbase and our NiceHash accounts to be as safe as we possibly can out there. I guess you can kind of consider it like a condom for mining, except we all don't hate this one. Let's get it. Alrighty, you bucking stallions and you beautiful stallionettes, we're over here at my PC, gonna go ahead and share my screen here. So this is the nice hash platform. You guys probably definitely recognize the dashboard if you have been around the channel for a while and you guys are mining yourselves, at least with this platform. So you're gonna come over here to your settings in the top right, which my face is kind of blocking. Uh, go over here to my settings. Yep, that'll all be blurred out. Now, first things first, if you guys any, are uh, doing any kind of streaming or YouTubing where you talk about cryptocurrency and you show your dashboard frequently and whatnot, obviously you want to make sure you blur out your personal information like your IP addresses. Now, for a while over here on the mining tab, I was blurring out uh, my, all my rigs are offline, so you're not going to see you're not going to see it. But um, the rig ID, which is more so just for troubleshooting, it's basically a, a unique identifiable number that if nice hash needs to troubleshoot why you're not getting paid what you should, or there's an issue with your card, they can assist you through that number. However, nobody can really do anything with that because the only purpose for that is to troubleshoot a, a not working well card. So they can't really do anything. But what people can and what people can utilize to take advantage of you and you should not show to anyone is your mining address. So if you click here, that's your actual uh, address that your coins are going to go to like right now I've been I haven't dumped out my wallet into my hard wallet in about uh, seven days or so seven or eight days so I have about 70 bucks in there right now besides not showing your information so if you are a streamer youtuber you do any kind of screen share or you just show your friends that you don't fully trust maybe some some online acquaintances blur out your information so while you're editing post editing go ahead and blur stuff out uh, the next thing you want to do is to enable two-factor two authentication. And if there is an option for either SMS, which is traditional text message, don't do that. SMS is extremely easy to hack. It's very vulnerable. So what you want to do is some kind of a authenticator app. Like it's called Google Authenticator. And what that does is it is an encrypted application that will give you a unique six-digit code that refreshes every, I think it's 30 or 60 seconds. But basically it looks just like that. Can you see that? Oh no, with my blinds, it's causing a nasty blur. But anyway, I can show you these numbers right now because these will refresh themselves as you see the little countdown timer. Uh, they'll refresh themselves like every 60 seconds. So that is a much safer than SMS. So make sure you enable that on any application that offers a authenticator app. Usually it's Google Authenticator. Sometimes it'll be a different application, but those are very, very secure in comparison to something like traditional SMS or text message. The next thing, and I just recently realized this by doing a bunch of research, is only be opted into the services and nice hash that you're actually going to use. So for me, I need to get paid, so I need the wallet on, and I mine. But the cryptocurrency exchange, which for one, the nice hash exchange is not available in North America. You'd have to run a VPN to even access it. Not to mention, I've... I've looked into their platform. It's not as good as like Coinbase when it comes to just buying and selling cryptocurrencies. So um, I leave that off because you're just signed in or opted into another service and you're on another uh, platform that exposes you to where if NiceHash, just their hash power, just their cryptocurrency is comp compromised because all your accounts are linked in there, you're compromised as well. So for me, all I need to do is mine and get paid for it. So I leave both of these off. Now, do understand that there is a difference between your public key if you're going to receive cryptocurrency. So technically, I could show you guys these here. They're on my Ledger Nano S. And neither of these links are valid anymore because once you make a transaction, you uh, you complete the withdrawal or deposit. These reset and then these addresses are they're dead, but not they're not dead. They're linked to the blockchain as a past transaction. But um, I'm going to book. I'll probably blur these out post-production. Maybe I won't. Who knows? Like, you can't really do anything with these because these are... It says active, but they're, they're not. These transactions have been complete. And all you can do with this anyway is send me some BTC. So if you're going to do that, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. But your private key, obviously, which is the unique key for your hard wallet, whether you have a Ledger or a Trezor hard wallet, or maybe another brand, whether it's cold storage, completely offline, or it's, it's hot storage. It's an app or something that's an encrypted app that you're still connected to the internet. So it's not as safe but 
still safer than leaving it in like Coinbase or NiceHash. Um, you're going to have a private key. Don't share that with anybody. And the only way to to restore that code is to have your your passphrases, which is basically a series of 20 or 25 words, you know, donkey, brown, house, fire, um, admire, whatever. And you write those down on a little card. And then if you lose your device or you've been compromised, you can use that to buy a new device, basically, and then transfer over all your information that way. Uh, that's the only way that these hard wallets are really hackable is if somebody gets your private key or if they get your actual card, your physical card that should be locked up in your house in a safe somewhere. Don't leave it in your car in case you get broken into. Don't keep it on your person or in your wallet. There's no reason for that. Just keep it locked away in your house or hidden somewhere. And, you know, think of that like your social security card or something. You want to guard that. Next thing to protect you guys is to withdraw your cryptocurrency uh, at least when you hit a $100 threshold. I honestly do it probably, yeah, it's, it's about the $100 threshold or at least once a month. So if you don't really earn a lot of cryptocurrency with your older laptop or desktop, then just withdraw it probably about once a month. You don't want to leave it in here any longer than it has to be. Granted, the last time granted the last time NiceHash was hacked was December 6th of 2017, but that could easily happen again. It was a major hack. Granted, they did a lot of reworking behind the scenes of their platform, changing security protocols and also their website's architecture or infrastructure, if you will, um, you know, to try and alleviate some of those access points, some of those vulnerabilities that were in place. So um, again, we're in 2021 now, 2017, that was four years ago, but, and I hadn't even been on the platform. I didn't even know about mining or ha had been doing it until about two years ago. So, but still that could happen again. So I would rather lose about, you know, a hundred dollars, which is just about the most I'll ever have in here. than if I never dump this out, because I'm considering it some kind of a long-term storage for BTC, which it's not, uh, this is just what you're going to get from mining. Uh, in case you guys don't know, when you mine, you get paid out in Bitcoin, BTC, which is actually great because that is going up by the day. Uh, looking at my little Elgato stream deck over here, I have a little a little um, screen on there that has Bitcoin's current price, 59225 I started investing in Bitcoin when it was down there in the low 40s, so I, I wish I would have got in earlier, but still, it's continuing to rise. And uh, since you do get paid out in Bitcoin, if you put this in a hard wallet or something, you're actually getting more for your mining because when you go to cash it in like eight months to a year out, if you don't need the funds immediately, um, you're going to see some pretty good little capital gains. Keep in mind those are taxable, unfortunately. But yeah, what I recommend doing is withdrawing to your, pull out my drawer here, to your hard wallet. Now you can get a ledger, you can get a trezor. This is linked in the description below as well as the higher end Trez, uh, Nano X, which is a very good device. However, in my opinion, the Nano S just saved the 30 or 40 bucks unless you have several different kinds of cryptocurrency. If you have Ether, Ethereum, Dash, Tether, Bat, like 10 or more cryptos, then yeah, the, the X can store like 35 plus coins at a time as where the Nano does about 10, which is more than I ever have. The only thing I ever, really ever have is BTC from mining or occasionally if there's a hot moving crypto, like Ethereum starts bumping up or um, or Compound, I have some of that, Celo, Graph, New, Cypher, something like that. So that's going to do it for nice hash. We're going to come over here to Coinbase and you're going to go to your settings up here and that will take you here. You want to go to this tab right here, which is security. You want to keep your cell phone number up to date because if you are using the SMS verification, that's where they're going to text. Not to mention if there's an issue with your account, they will notify you via text message or maybe even a call if it's that serious. Uh, and you want to activate your two step, two step verification. Now you can do again SMS, which is by default what they have you on, but I opted into using the Google Authenticator app because time-based one digit, uh, time-based one time six digit codes, and that is very safe. However, there is even a safer method above that. Uh, the strongest two step is to consider upgrading to a security key. So this is with your physical hard wallet. As you see, there's a little screen on here. And if you have like a couple hundred thousand or a million dollars in cryptocurrency or something, this little screen right here will illuminate and it'll give you a super unique, super encrypted, super virtually impossible to hack. Like when I say virtually, it is. It is because it's a cold storage wallet. It's not on the internet or anything. And the only time it's connected to the internet, it's double and triple encrypted inside of the uh, ledger or Trezor application. It's it's pretty damn secure. However, Coinbase is insured to replace your cryptocurrency. It's the, I don't believe it's an FDIC insurance like... Uh, my my stock platforms like Robinhood and Weeble and TD Ameritrade, which will replace about a quarter million, 250,000. But 
I know they will replace your cryptocurrency, but I'd rather just not I'd, I'd rather not risk it for a biscuit. Same thing with NiceHash. That 2017 hack, they paid back virtually, uh, to my knowledge, everyone's money. It took a while for them to get the funds together. They had to probably take out business loans and stuff, but they paid back all their users, which still, that, you know, that doesn't redeem them for being hacked. That showed a major lack of security in their system and also the fact it could happen again. And a lot of people never use NiceHash since then. A lot of people swear off the platform. Uh, I think Son of Tech, he's a major YouTuber, he says he still hates NiceHash. And I think a lot of that is based to what happened in 2017. Granted, they have made great strides since then. And for somebody like myself, it's only been using their platform for about two years. I haven't experienced any unsavoriness, which is good. Any amount of cryptocurrency. So even if it's a small transaction, it's still going to have you use your authenticator app, which is which is good. Unlike NiceHash, Coinbase, you can actually keep your coins in for a while. However, I would only keep currency cryptocurrency in coinbase that you are going to be day or swing trading with so intraday or within a week to a month you know a swing trade and the reason for that is this is just a brokerage this is an open platform here so this is this isn't even hot storage this is just hot hot it's connected to the internet and granted coinbase is pretty reputable if you look into their security infrastructure it's pretty good they have it dialed in pretty well but i'd still rather not expose myself to getting squeezed in the tuchus. So what I do is if I'm not going to be day or swing trading some currency, uh, cryptocurrency, which generally I buy and hold BTC because it definitely grows in the, it definitely grows in the long term. Let's click on it real quick. Show you a little something, something here. So obviously the all time growth is up 56,000%. The last year, 855%. The last month, 15%. And then obviously when you get into like a week, 24 hours, one hour, that's going to fluctuate constantly. Uh, you could easily go gray or lose some hair looking at your portfolio constantly because these are so volatile, even comp in comparison to something like penny stocks, which a lot of people day and swing trade. Um, it's just savagely, savagely volatile. But in the long term, it's definitely, definitely going up. So I, I do personally, I get this question all the time. And I'll probably make a separate video on it. Kevin, should I mine or should I buy and hold or should I, you know, exchange cryptocurrency, like trade it like a commodity, you know, day swing trade or just buy and hold and long term invest? Or should I just mine? I say both. Absolutely both. If you already own a gaming PC or laptop that has a decent GPU in it, GPU mine, don't CPU mine. It's a waste of time and energy. If you have an ASIC miner, which they're extremely expensive, like an ant miner, they're stupid expensive, but those earn an astronomical uh, mega hash or hash rate and you would be making a small fortune. If you had a farm with like six of those and solar panels on your roof, you would be making a small fortune right now, mining Ethereum with Dagger Hash Moto. But, uh, so I would recommend doing that. It's passive income and eventually, depending on what graphics card you have, have it will pay for itself. For example, my 3080, um, just the card itself, not my whole PC, but the 3080 will pay for itself in about five or six months if that if i were mining 24 hours a day uh which is pretty cool that you get a free kick-ass graphics card but i don't mind 24 hours a day i mine about 16 obviously when i'm on my pc gaming streaming or 4k video editing i don't use my gpu for mining and then also buying and selling is going to be the most lucrative for you because instead of just making oh 100 bucks you know 100 bucks a month or 300 bucks a month mining if you have the the if you have the extra income for it, obviously don't invest anything you don't, you can't afford to lose. And this comes down to any kind of commodity, stocks, bonds, ETFs, mutual funds, REITs, uh, investing in physical real estate, investing in gold. It doesn't matter what your portfolio is. You don't want to invest money that you can't afford to lose. Now, granted, a lot of times you don't lose that money, but if you need to access the money quickly because there's a life emergency, your car dies or your kid lost their scholarship because they take after your brains, not their mom's or something then you might have to pay for college or something. I would just tell them to go into mil the military at that point. But um, so if you need to access your funds quickly, you know, then obviously you don't want to uh, be investing that money. But buying and holding BTC is stupid lucrative right now. Absolutely stupid, stupid lucrative. For example, this has gone up 15% in the last month. So in just 30 days, your investment would have grown 15%. That's pretty huge. That's what she said. But like for a long-term investment, that's huge. And you can 
if you know what you're doing, you can day and swing trade these little dips and whatnot. By the way, shameless plug, I wasn't going to mention this, but since I am talking about investing and whatnot, I do have a course that I created for investing in the stock market, day trading, swing trading, and long-term investing that will be linked in the description below. It is on the Udemy platform and they are constantly running sales on it. You can get it generally under well under 50 bucks and you can take the course on your phone, tablet, or PC. It's very, very, very beneficial if you have no idea some of the jargon I'm talking about, about buying the dip and waiting for pullbacks and all that stuff. My neighbor looking like a snack over there. Anyway, but yeah, I would not keep your money invested in, uh, I wouldn't keep your money stored in Coinbase for very long. I would withdraw it to your hard wallet if you're going to be keeping it for the long term. If, like I said, if you're going to be day or swing trading it, then you keep that money in there because obviously it takes time for these deposit deposits and withdrawals. Now also, and this is a really, really nice feature that Coinbase has, they have what's called Vault over here. So you come over to here, you can create a Vault, and basically it is... A great place to store your crypto for the long term. Features include time delayed withdrawals, multiple approvers, and offline storage. So this is more or less a, a cold storage wallet built into their platform, which is really cool. Now, I personally still prefer a physical device because to me that's even safer. And also that comes with you on the go if you need it. But I will say... This is really nice that they offer this feature, and I would recommend if you do if you do have over, I would say about $1,000 in Bitcoin or any kind of cryptocurrency to open up a vault and store your stuff over there. It is safer, and that is if you do not have a hard wallet and don't plan on using one. All right, this video is getting longer than I expected, so I think I'm going to cut it here, but that's basically everything I wanted to cover anyway. How to lock down your Coinbase and your NiceHash platform. You want to create two-factor two authentication with the Google Authenticator app, not SMS. You do not want to store bulk crypto on either one of these platforms you know mine and withdrawal and then day and swing trade and withdrawal keep everything in your hard wallet uh or the vault i mean the vault's a good option too over there on coinbase i've heard no issues of uh people having funds taken from the vault or anything like that so that's really 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 good if this video was beneficial for you guys it helped you to lock down your accounts a little bit please like the video that helps it to get seen by more people so this information can reach and help them as well Subscribe for more content like this. I do a lot of tutorials around cryptocurrency, as well as helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing. And I do a lot of news in the gaming community and industry. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.